I'm Nick Hughes, and this is Founders Live Conversations. Everyone, welcome to Founders Live Conversations. I, I am Nick Hughes. I'm the CEO and founder of Founders Live, and um, you know today we are having a, a great conversation with uh, Sharon Eddings. And uh, Code with Sharon is really her project and her business, and really, really excited to hear about teaching STEM and, and coding skills to teachers that end up teaching other people. So yeah. um, with that, I want to introduce Sharon and, and have you say hi, and then give us a little bit of background on yourself and, and um, just like a little bit of background first before we dive into the meat. Okay, so hi everybody, I'm Sharon Eddings. I am the founder and CEO of Code with Sharon. Um, Code with Sharon got started um, some years ago from another crisis, the financial crisis of 2008, basically. Um, we had a small business, it was delivery, and of course, gas prices shot up, and that ran us out of business. And so, and I had just had my third child right after that. He was born very sickly. And I was working in group homes and it wasn't going anywhere. And I was like, I needed better insurance for my son. I needed a career that made me, you know, want to get up in the morning, made me proud. Um, I think everybody wants that dream job or that dream career or business or something. And so I, you know, went to the library, got a lot of books and one of the, the last book that I read was uh, Computer Science. Um, so one was taxes, mortgage, um, real estate or something like that. And so I went through those and I was like, that's not it. I didn't feel anything. And when I got to computer science, I fell in love. And so I started to teach myself how to code, couldn't afford a coding boot camp. Um, so I was using YouTube back then it was updated. Um, and about eight months, um, eight months later, I just, you know, I'm tenacious. Um, I put my resume online and I ended up two weeks later getting a call from an automotive software engineering company. Um, from there, I knew that this was the career that I wanted. Um, I was hungry and thirsty for knowledge. I kept studying. And about uh, under two years, I became project manager over two radar development teams. And so we developed blind spot detection, rear traffic cross assistance, and lane change assistance software. I wanted everybody to know about coding. And so I wanted the first to start at home. Then I'm like, I'm tenacious, right? I, I dream big. So I was like, I'll teach my son and I'll teach his class, you know, his classmates. So I went from school, you know, different schools trying to see how I can volunteer. Um, went to his school. They finally sent home a letter asking parents to share their skill sets. And that's how Cold with Sharon started. I had kids sneaking into my classes. I had waiting lists. Um, parents, like, why, did, why are you teaching adults? And so that's how Cold with Sharon was born. Oh, great. Great. And, um, you know, so I, I definitely want to dive deeper into that. Um, but I do want to touch on initially, um, you know, what just kind of entering into this conversation, you know, how has the last few months been for you? Um, it's been weird. It's been difficult. It's been challenging. Um, you know, we can start with COVID, but like, how how have you been dealing with this whole situation, the pandemic and everything of that nature? Um, let's just start there. As far as health wise, you mean just like keeping ourselves safe or business wise? Yeah, let's start with personally. Um, how have you been keeping yourself safe? And then how has it flowed into, uh, you know, if we can't meet in person, it's disrupted things. Yeah. How has that been for you? As far as health wise, we have, um, my immediate family, my husband and my kids, we've been doing well. Um, I do have a uh, older son that, that wasn't at home at the time when all this hit and he was still working, um, but he, he's doing good. I have a sister uh, that is a nurse and her daughter is a nurse. Unfortunately, they both got COVID, um, but they both are on the mend. Um, they're back at work, uh, couldn't wait to get back to work. Um, so we were scared for them. And then I have a twin sister. Um, Karen, she's at home. Um, she's in healthcare too. And, um, she, you know, so just nervous for, you know, my family that's out there on the front line as an essential worker. Um, and so, and I really, um, we just, you know, social distance, stayed at home, only went out when necessary. As far as business, um, I think every business, especially on small businesses, you're waiting for that big break. And so what happened was I was eventually able to land a contract that would have gotten my software that I developed um, in, into five school districts. Really excited. 
And so it got shut down first because of January when the government shut down. So that delayed it, right? So first the holidays delayed it, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then, okay, we're ready to go. The government shut down. That delayed it again. Then we get set. We got dates. We're ready to go. We know what school districts we're going to be in. And then COVID hit. And that would have been a big contract for us. And it still is an opportunity, but that would have helped me because I'm bootstrapping. So those that revenue would have gave me proof of concept, right? Because I have an MVP. It would have gave me proof of concept. I've auditioned for Shark Tank doing right before COVID, days before COVID, looking for a, a investor, but I need revenue. I need to prove that this business model can make money. Um, and so all that was just, you know, washed away or put on hold. We had to quickly figure out how do we navigate this? How do we, we have to keep going. And so we started to look at virtual learning and distance learning, digital learning. Now, how can we, okay, we already do hour long courses because we know that fits school schedules. And, and they were already used to that with another competitor who had hour long courses, right? Um, and so we knew they were used to that. Now, how can we integrate that into what's going on now? That all these kids are online, these teachers need help. And so we moved into that space and we started to push that value proposition. And so we're looking to ramp that up and really uh, make that a huge part of our value and our business proposition. Got it. Yeah, it's you know, obviously been been a difficult time. And, um, you know, just by I think it's just mere survival. Right. Yeah. So yeah. How, how have you approached you met you, you mentioned bootstrapped and you mentioned all that how what has been your mentality of just surviving through this time to either get out to the i mean i don't know what new normal looks like i yeah. don't think any, anyone does but what, describe your mentality of your survival just to get through it well a lot of things that i learned um getting older and growing up that nothing goes to waste everything you've learned eventually makes you that person you're supposed to be. And it's not what happens to you, it's how you react to those situations, right? And so that was a difficult one for me to learn. Um, all these things have came to make me stronger. I grew up in Detroit, uh, a very um, tough neighborhood. Uh, we lost a lot of um, friends. Um, I had some brothers um, um, affected um, by violence. So our family has been affected by violence in some of the worst ways. And so we always had to, it felt like, well, you know, we would get knocked down and we had to get back up, right? Something to come along, get knocked down, get back up. Um, and so that's just always, I think I was born to be an entrepreneur just, or I was just turned into one without me really knowing it because it matches where I come from. It matches my struggles. Um, you get knocked down, you have to get back up. And, and the stronger I got, and the more I stopped taking it personally, I think that was one of my biggest downfalls and I still struggle with it today, but at least I'm aware of it, taking things personally. No, when people tell you no, or um, getting questions. And, and that's why I would do pitch competitions to build up thick skin and be able to answer questions. And of course, not take them personally because everybody's not out to attack you. They, you know, they just want facts and you have to have facts, right? Um, and so that's how I was able to quickly, you know, I get up quicker and I come up with, uh, that was something we already had in our business model to integrate um, distance learning because I knew that that would be a big part of education. I've been watching the ed tech um, market for a while. I actually pulled my last son, which is 14 now, or he'll be 14 in October. I put him out of school two years ago and homeschooled him because I knew this was the way. We just had to integrate it into our value proposition much earlier, but it was something I was already looking at. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's a crazy time, um, yeah. but I'm excited to hear yeah. more about, more about um, you know, Code with Sharon. And let's start here. You just mentioned something really interesting, which was you felt like you were born to be an entrepreneur. Uh, walk us through that. Let's let's follow that down the path to then learn how you really did get into uh, creating uh, Code with Sharon and and really just your path. You you dove into entrepreneurship. Why do you say you feel like you were born to be an entrepreneur? I've always always was trying to start something. If you talk to anybody who knows me, always try to start a business. Um, 
it, you know, it, it came down to, okay, maybe, okay, this business didn't work, which I didn't know at the time. Um, and I uncovered some of my habits or bad habits that didn't allow those to flourish. And, and you, you're not ready. That's what it comes down to, right? Um, and when we look at, and I started to read about other entrepreneurs, and then you see that they have had several businesses, not, you know, you know, multiple business beyond several, um, and they failed. And I learned that failure is a part of the process. It's just the way you look at it. I didn't fail. I just made some mistakes that caused me to fail. If I correct those mistakes, and then the next time I'll do better. And of course, always want to do better and better. So um, I started out, you know, one of the things I can remember was teaching my son how to measure, right? He was struggling in school with fractions and all that type of stuff. And so what I did was I took him in the kitchen and I, I bought, you know, a lot of different measuring cups and, and spoons and things like that. And we just got on the floor and start measuring things. And so my husband was like, why don't you make some pizzas? So we started to make pizzas. Next thing you know, they got good. And we're making them from scratch. He went to Gordon Food St Service, which is a restaurant supply company um, store, and bought us the pizza pans, everything. We got so good, we actually started delivering. Um, I, then I found a location, and I'm good at asking people, calling people, and asking. I'll ask anything. I'll call you. If I want something, I'm going to call you. So I went down to Wayne State University, and I found a uh, an empty space in the, like a club or something. And I got a hold of that guy um, and I had him lease us a space. Um, so the thing was I could never scale because of course you need um, funds to scale. And so I've always tried to start stuff. And, and so that's just something that's always been a part of me. One year we made some nice Christmas jars for um, to sell candy jars with the Santa heads on top of it. Um, sold them for I think $25 and, and my husband worked at a warehouse and it flew off the shelf. From there I started to look at what does it take to run a business? I need to look at how much I was spending, my cost of, you know, cost of goods. Um, and then I learned to start breaking that stuff down. But lo and behold, even we even knew how much every pizza cost us, how much every pepperoni cost us, how much a bag of flour cost us. And so all that was building me up for cold wish here. Love that. Love that. Um, so, uh, so take us through, uh, again, you mentioned a little bit before about how you discovered the opportunity to create Code with Sharon, um, but why STEM and why coding? Well, when I first got into coding, what I really loved was the culture of tech, the environment, right? So I come from a, a culture where um, you have to be at work at eight, and if you're late for some reason, maybe your teacher have to talk, your son's teacher have to talk to you, or traffic. You're always under that pressure of I got to make it at eight or nine or whatever the time. It was just too much pressure. Being a mother, it was just too many variables. Being a mother, if your kid is sick and you can't go to work, now you're worried about getting fired. When I started working at um, the company that was located, that is located in Novi, and they mimic, they mimic Google right? And so we were in a project-based um, software environment. And so that means that uh, a company, you know, that wants you to build the software basically drops off the project and say, hey, I want it back in two years, but give me monthly updates so you continue to work on it. Uh, I was able then to say, hey, we don't have, um, you know, quotas that we have to meet at the end of the day, like if you're in a factory. So nobody can call off because we have to get this quota, right? We weren't under that pressure. So I was able to give my um, staff members or team members, okay, you want to, you don't want to work Friday. She, one lady didn't want to work Friday, so she can come in Monday through Thursday. She had a five, she can let herself in. Um, you can come as early as five in the morning and she would leave at about 3.30. We had one um, team member who wanted to be, he was a male, he wanted to be a part of his daughter, daughter's school education. He wanted to take her to school. Okay, he wanted to come in at 11. And so we were able to have those flexibility. So I was able to be a mother, an employee, and, and still have the time to work on something else. And I wanted people, especially people who had children, who were responsible for children, who needed that flexibility. Um, just the awesomeness of the stuff that they offered us. Um, they listened, our employers listened to us. It wasn't that where it's a stair step, right? My, the owners would come by my desk and ask, how is Jackson? They knew my kids by name. Um, we can bring our kids to school if, you know, if they were out of school. 
they made us feel really com comfortable. Um, and, and I saw growth and I saw opportunity. I saw nothing getting in my way but me. And I wanted everybody to know about that, and especially our youth, since we're moving towards that digital, well, we're already in it, but you know, everything, every company will become or is becoming a tech company. And so everybody needs to learn the skill set, some form or fashion of it. Right. And so I feel like uh, I, something really interesting about um, Code with Sharon is you're teaching the teachers who then teach the students. So uh, tell us more about that. And, and why did you choose to teach teachers versus, hey, let's just like go straight and teach students? Well, the reason we did that, because I volunteered in schools while I was building the software and like from when I went to first volunteer to teach my son, I saw a niche. I saw that they need a better um, platform. I saw that they needed to do things differently. When I go in there and teach and I leave, I take the education with me. I take the knowledge with me. We wanted to leave that there in the schools with the teachers so that any class that they taught or the next year or whatever, um they can teach these lessons to the students and so we wanted to leave that in that school and in that community um and just provide them more lessons if they wanted to teach uh and so it's built like a stepping stone so one lesson leads into the next and the more that you want your students to learn it's different packages that you can purchase but the goal was always to leave that there and okay so then the um it, it it's a stair step process how does a, um, you know, how, how do they get started? And do you go to school specifically? How do you um, approach them? What is the pricing structure? And then lastly, um, given now, is there a virtual experience on it or is it really hands-on? You actually go on to a location to uh, teach them. Yeah, and so how it works now is they can purchase a one lesson. So we just did an event for friends and technology and they do it once a month, right? Um, it's not their students, but they just get students online um, to learn different things. So one hour is dedicated to gaming, one hour is dedicated, maybe they might learn a language and one hour is dedicated to STEM and I will grab that one hour, right? And so what happens um, when we did that, we had students come as far away as from London. Um, and so what they would do is I would walk them through the lesson because I was hired to do a live lesson. So we do live lessons, or they can purchase a license and then sign on and use the software. Um, everything is easy to use and we use video tutorials to make sure the teachers know how to do it. Um, and so it's just a fun interactive. And so how we have it set up, if you want to purchase one lesson, you can buy a, a daily um, license. So that's like $29.99. If you wanted to use that as the extended license where you can teach that one teacher can teach as many teacher students as she wants, that's nine, um, that's 99 um, for that extended license and that's per lesson. Uh, or we have different packages and we're still working on our packages as we develop out the um, value proposition. And so we wanna keep it low and affordable. Uh, we have to fit, it's so many different needs out there. Not everybody um, is actually online as a school. So we have different people that are just doing different events to help educate and keep kids busy because they're sitting in their living rooms and these kids are bored. And you can see when you look through the camera, these kids are bored and they're glad they have something to do. Um, and so we found that to be very, um, a very good um, opportunity for us. Yeah, so what is the next three to five years look like for you? And for Code with Sharon, uh, what is that vision of what you would like it to develop into as you continue to grow? I think the next thing we need to work on is, of course, um, finding a way to get some funding, right? Of course, there's always to increase sales. We, we need to hire. We, we're looking to bring on staff so that we can really diversify and add on more lessons, streamline the process, um, and things like that. And so that's what we're looking to do next. Um, also, um, we're going to build out first um, over the next year. And then once we perfect this value proposition, and then we will scale up, of course, just to scale up and to reach out to different, uh, you know, different countries and things like that. Um, as far as we can reach, that's where we want to go. Um, so that's some of the things. Onboarding um, new staff is the most critical part that a business can do. Um, and so that's something we're really going to focus on. 
take our time to hire the right people um, to build that culture. So we're really interested in, we're really working and hammering out our work culture to attract those um, intelligent and, and um, exciting people to build our lessons. We also want to have a training program so that we can have people who are just new to coding who can get their first job in tech. And so, and those are some of the things we want to work on. We really want to um, offer opportunities, especially so that we can diversify and get other people interested in tech. Yeah, I, I would I would agree, and and that's where I was. Um, my mind was thinking on that. Um, you know, what is there specific populations you do focus on, and then uh, would like to talk a little more about uh, underrepresented and and how we can improve that. But uh, yeah, what what specific uh, populations do you focus on, or is it just uh, different? It's all over the board. Yeah. So we focus on urban schools because we know that they're underserved. Um, I have taught in suburban schools and, and they're above board. They're, you know, doing well, but we still target those schools as well. We want to target especially young uh, women because we know tech is really low when it comes to women and that's of all races. Uh, and then we want to get um, just, just like I said, people um, in urban communities and black communities um, and black and brown communities and get, you know, these students, these young people, um, learning how to code and, and seeing that it is fun and seeing all the opportunities. And so what we found the struggle is, you know, they love coding, but how can you keep them interested in coding? And so that's one of the biggest struggles um, that we face is just to keep them coming back. And so we build exciting games that we know that they love. So we know kids love gaming, right? And so some of the assignments that they build is like a, a video splash screen or a game level, but they write it with code and we keep it simple and fun. It's more like wash and repeat. Uh, we teach them a couple of coding um, disciplines and then they just use it over and over themselves so that they start to feel confident. And so, and that's how we build the structure and, and we work on keeping their attention. Yeah, I think this is really cool. This is really, um, it, it, you know, it, you just said it keeps their attention, it, it, it's fun. And, and especially at younger ages, that's, that, that, that's so important. Um, what do you think, oh man, uh, tough question. If you get, there's so many challenges and issues in our, in our industry, but what do you think is holding back the underrepresented groups? And then what can we bring, what, how can we help when I say we, I mean, you know, in general, but, you know, Founders Live and in our organization, um, how can we help, right? But like, what's, what's the main issue right now from your perspective? I know that there's a lot of things going on, but from your perspective, as you actually teach, you're part of the pipeline solution, right? That, that's, we hear a lot like, well, the pipeline of talented people to get into um, development and coding is so low in terms of underrepresented, so you're part of the solution, but what is the biggest problem right now? Well, the biggest problem is uh, that we see um, companies say they want to diversify. We do see that. Um, what I've learned um, looking at different um, school systems is that when you come to urban schools, the educational system is just not up to par. And so you have kids struggling with things as um, critical and computational thinking skills, right? Some of these things needs to be addressed before. Um, okay, so one thing I found out is typing. I thought because kids play video games, they knew how to type. Um, and then I realized when I got into schools that, yeah, they, they didn't know how to type. And so we work on some of these other things that we see getting in a way that really frustrates them. Because remember, kids get frustrated really quickly. And so um, the way the software is designed so they can just click and um, drop the, you know, the line of code, we explain the code to them. Mm -hmm. And so we want to address those things. Also, when it comes to businesses like mine, minority business, businesses owned by black women, um, some of the problems is first, you know, you need funding and only 2% of women, that's women period, get funding and less than that for black, you know, women. And so funding for us is almost impossible to obtain. So how do you keep your business going? How do you overcome these challenges? Uh, how do you um, 
you know, get somebody interested in your company. I can tell you one instance that I was doing pitch circles, right? Work in a circle, the circuit, and every, it was all white males and I'm the only black female at that time. Um, and so over the year or year and a half, I saw that the white males got some type of funding. Um, but when it came to me, it was, uh, you got questioned more harder. Um, I even seen a guy that was um, pitching an old, um, what was it, solar panel. Now it's the big clunky ones. He wanted to put in people's backyards, not the nice small ones that we see now. He got more attention than me. Um, so you, you're, you're doubted out the gate, right? Um, but that, I can't let that stop me because I know other people have done it. I know it's possible. I might have to wait a little longer. I might have to try something else. Um, but the goal is you just never give up. You just keep working and hard work meets opportunity and there you go. And so no matter what, we just don't give up. But how people like Founders Live can help us is keep doing what you're doing. Just help us get the word out. Keep the conversations going. Um, I, what I see in these protests is what's going on now, unfortunately, due to the, the death of George Floyd is we were talking about that. I have uh, white brothers and sisters that are calling me to see how I'm doing. And I told them that I think I finally see that you see what we've been trying to get you to see. And that's been the biggest, that's, that's all. Just see, look at what we're telling y'all. This is true. And so that's the big difference, I think. And that's the flame that's um, burning this and keeping this and fueling this. And so that's something I'm, help, I'm, I'm happy about and I'm hopeful about when it comes to the future. I like companies that, you know, don't just say they're going to diversify. Actually diversify. Actually, instead of Google, um, you know, bragging about people rolling around on skates and dog walking, open up a section of your business and have a training, you know, train new people who have some coding skills and then give them, put them in different positions and things like that. You have the time. Evidently, you have the time because everybody's washing clothes and getting massage. Take that time and nurture another community that's underserved. Um, and so those are some of the things that uh, I think you could do and, and people could do to help uh, raise another community up. This has been, you know, so underserved. Yeah, those are all, those are great ideas. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult. It's, uh, you know, you mentioned, um, I, things are such at uh, an, a heightened awareness now. You, you are right that, um, you know, we that are in uh, different positions are, are, are much more aware now. Um, and, you know, it is unfortunate that it's taken these, these drastic, terrible situations. Um, but I think it's, um, I mean, there's so much dynamics around this topic. When we talk about just, you know, um, being a part of the solution, um, this is why, you know, it's not just I don't want to talk with you regardless, but this is one of the reasons why is because you are bringing a solution to the larger issue that is uh, the, not enough individuals that look different than me, not enough of them are having this, that have, are taught and have the skills to uh, be educated or be uh, employed and, and be in our industry and you're part of the solution. So um, I love that. And yes, we want to continue to do this. And I think the big question is, um, from my perspective, how do we get this in, you know, multiple cities and multiple countries and, and getting and having large corporations um, know about it, partner with you, um, see the value. Um, I do think the issues that are happening around the country right now are bringing a lot more attention to be, you know, pay, paying attention to these solutions. So, um, you know, this question is going to sound weird, but how do you, I'm just going to use the word leverage, but how do you leverage the like current tension to take code with Sharon further and your teaching to a higher level? 
You know what I mean? Because it is an opportunity, although it's challenging, this is your time. So how, how and yeah, how, how, how are you gonna do that? I agree, and we wanna capitalize off this as much as possible. Um, we're working with um, SCORE mentors. Um, a lot of things, like I say, in urban schools, we weren't taught. I'm learning a lot of this stuff on the job. Um, I'm not the only one, and it's not just Black communities, right? Um, but for me, I'm learning as I go. And what I've done is to reach out to um, people who know more than me, people who have successful business. And thank God for SCORE mentors. You have all these wonderful people with so much expertise coming back to help me. And so that's something we're working on now. Um, how do I reach out to other businesses is, you know, this marketing is a beast. So I'm learning marketing and how to speak out. I do call people and ask people's questions. Um, I do call people and just ask questions. How do I do this? Um, and so that's something that's not my wheelhouse and I'm working on how do I get, you know, corporations and, and, you know, how do I, you know, get people to listen to me? And so I don't have the answer for that yet, but we are working on it. We do not want this to pass us by without, you know, being able to capitalize off of it because this just doesn't, this opportunity, they're just not laying around, you know? So uh, we are really working on that really hard and trying to figure out how we can get COVID sharing out there. Looking at some of the things that make me different, I'm an African-American woman and I'm, I'm a, you know, and I'm a software engineer. You don't see that a lot, you know what I'm saying? So how do we capitalize off that? How do we show people that tech is a wonderful environment and you know the water is you know it's fine come on in you know uh, how do we get people to understand that um it is a space where you could or need to be because it's going to be a lot of the job so you have to get comfortable with it how do we find the right words to say to people and things like that so i'm working with that on my marketing uh, really homing in on my value proposition and getting the word out um and so yeah we're looking forward to that um, so of everyone listening and watching, um, if you have any questions, please uh, either unmute yourself and, and kind of jump in here, post in the questions. Uh, I'm sure you're thinking some things. So, you know, uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, you know, Sharon, there's individuals on here that um, either have their own coding projects. Um, so they're, 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 you know, in, interested in, in uh, development or uh, coding their own stuff. Um, some people on this call are associated with quite large organizations that reach very large corporations. Um, how can they help you or how could they get involved in um, either bringing this to uh, you know, their state or schools in, in their city? Um, how, how would you want us to help you? So to partner with me to bring, uh, especially certain communities, like I, I've worked with fraternities and sororities, they have a budget for their youth, you know, youth members. Some organizations don't. I have one that reached out to me and they wanted coding lessons, um, but they didn't have computers. And so what we did was we came up with a plan for them to go to the library and do the lessons online. Um, it's a lot of schools and youth organizations that do not have computers. So we would like to, once COVID, you know, gets better and then we can start meeting in person again, uh, which Michigan has opened up, but a lot, not everything. Um, computers is the, one of the main things. Laptops um, are one of the main issues when it comes to youth organizations. Sponsoring an, an event so that students can come for free. That would be another um, great way. Um, and just leveraging those, you know, the names of these companies to be associated with COVID sharing and helping COVID sharing get to the next level um, would be something that would be very beneficial for us. Um, also, um, guidance, um, mentor, you know, just, you know, someone I can call and ask a question. That's one of the main things is some of the things I don't know. You might know something that I don't know. You might know somebody that I don't know. And then you can reach out to me and say, hey, you know, contact this person. Business relationships. My mentor told me um, your network is your net worth. Who you know really matters. And so I've been really working in on these business relationships and getting to meet different people, not only just, um, just decision makers. We want the decision makers, the one that can say yes, um, that's what we want to hear. Yes, I'm not even going to say no, I want to hear yes. Um, and reach out and say, how can I help you? What can I do 
to help you help your community and other communities. That's some of the best things that um, I can think of. Very good, very good. And how, how would you, if you were thinking about working with, like, I, I just feel like Google, Microsoft, um, you know, Facebook, these large corporations, um, have you been able to talk with them? Are you looking to talk with them? These feel like really good directions. And, you know, I don't know if you're too early, you're right in the real house, but um, how would you like to talk with those organizations? Well, actually, I have worked with them through um, another facilitator. And so working with them, this is the goal. They want you to use their software. Um, and when I got to the schools, I didn't like a lot of these other software. My software, uh, and, and I have plans to expand it and make it better, is from years of being in school, seeing what students needed. And so I developed it around school. So partnering with them um, means that I would have to use their software. Um, and so that's one of the things that, um, unfortunately, I, I, that's why I started Code with Sharon. I didn't see that they understood what our students were going through. Um, I still would like to be a part of events with them. You know what I'm saying? I still do events that uh, are sponsored by Google and LinkedIn. Um, I haven't done one with Facebook yet, but I do know people who have these connections. Um, and so that also hinders me because I see things differently than maybe my competitor who works with these organizations. Um, and so that also has caused me some, um, you know, some, it slowed me down a little, but I keep going because I believe that it's something that they're missing that I see. And that's why I develop my software. The goal is to improve on, you know, and add everything in there that I see and just make it better. But right now it's just an MVP. Um, and so that's one of the things that, um, you know, I'm not a dot org. I didn't want to be a dot, you know, organization because, you know, I wanted to have ownership. I wanted to own my company. Um, and so even if I get funding, the goal is to keep as much of my company as possible to be, uh, it's about being an owner as well. It's about <clears throat> legacy, having something um, to show my, my sons, um, you know, that my mom, mom owns something, you know what I'm saying? Not that, you know, org is the community's business. Um, and so I really was about ownership as well. Very good. And so we have a question from Allison and sounds like she wants to jump in here and uh, chat. So Allison, feel free to take yourself off mute and uh, ask your question. Hey, Sharon. First off, this is great. Super excited. This is really awesome what you're doing. So my question is, how does this, how does your software look in the corporate world? Like, um, how scalable is it? What type, like, how, how flexible is it? How customizable is it? Like, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, and those are some great uh, questions. And those are some of the things we want to really improve on. Um, and so that's what we're looking for funding to bring in more software developers to do exactly what you just mentioned. So that it can truly compete with other software. Uh, we're at our phase one. Um, so I haven't put everything in there, but it does allow me to teach the students the way um, it gives me the flexibility to teach the way that I need to teach to deliver the lesson how I need to deliver it. Um, and so that's one of the great, um, you know, benefits of it. Um, but yeah, we do need to um, add some more features to it and just really build it out. Nice. Uh, and just taking that question a little further, um, it, what is the continuation, you know, you, uh, once you come in and you work with teachers and then, then they're going to like basically go further and, you know, help students of youth and whatnot. Um, do you have a continuation of education? Do you have a more long-term engagement? And, and tell us a little more about that. Yeah. And that's where they can purchase a package where um, some, like a, some schools might want a week package, right? It depends on what their, uh, schedule looks like. I had schools that reach out for uh, one week. We had some schools made wanted something for a month, and then you have schools that want something for the whole school year. Um, and so we came up with different license packages to fit those needs. Um, so what we found out, one of the one things is, um, you know, like I say, all schools wanted something different. How do we meet these needs, but how do we not go mm -hmm. overboard with um, what we offer? But we're trying to meet the basic needs that we see some of the things that all schools um, are dealing with. 
Um, one of the things we need to add in there is, uh, you know, pre and post evaluation so that we can track um, the student's growth. When they came in, what did they learn? When they left, you know, when they leave, you know, so you can see that. Another thing that we really want to do is have a platform that can follow students from school to school. What we saw that, you know, school students move around a lot. We noticed that. We might have a student that uh, miss a day. And when they come back to class, when I was in person testing the software to see some of the, uh, where are some of the pitfalls that, that we need to look out for? And so we saw that a, a student might miss a day for whatever reason. And then when they came back, okay, now I have to stop and pause and catch this person up. So now we need to have it where it can follow a student from any school that they go through, right? And they can just jump on wherever they left off at. And so that was breaking their learning cycle. They weren't able to keep up with their learning because they have to constantly start over. Also, what we learned is uh, with our competitors is schools didn't have one STEM provider to go to. They would have multiple STEM providers in there, right? And so one, and if you know anything about computer programming, it's like a fingerprint. So each person teach differently. We know that just with anything. Um, you can write code, I can write it one way, you can write it another, and it both looks the same. Um, you might use 100 lines of code, I might use 75 lines of code. And so when you bring in different providers and the student is constantly starting over, they never get a chance to get the honest fundamentals because they're always starting over and then somebody might come in and teach Java, somebody might come in and teach JavaScript. They don't even get the concept, they just get more Use and that caused frustration. So we want to build it out where it can follow a student wherever they go and, and they can just take off from where they left off at. That's the end goal for Code with Sharon. Um, so that's something we're really excited about. No, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, you know, I like to ask this question because I do, it's really interesting with entrepreneurs, but what, what was a time that you came upon a really big challenge and initially you might have thought this was it you know this was like not something you could overcome but then you overcame it so um, maybe think back at uh, that kind of point that breaking point of you came across a really big thing that was maybe scary initially and then you broke through it which gave you confidence to continue to move forward so I made a big decision in 2016 when that wonderful job that I had at that automotive software engineering company uh, outsourced our project to India. And I had to make a decision. Um, do I go out and look for another job or do I jump knee deep in and do I go full out with Cold with Sharon? And if I go full out with Cold with Sharon, where would I get money from? I'm not drawing a check anymore, right? That was very scary. Um, my husband is very supportive. So, you know, even though things were already tight, he, you know, he was supportive. And so I went full in with COVID share. Um, and then things got really tough. Um, my vehicle was repossessed. Um, my son um, had got sick again. Um, unfortunately, he ended up in ICU. He had an asthma attack. Um, and things got scary. Um, didn't have insurance because remember I left that job. And so I was like, it's, it's done. I'm over. I don't, you know, I don't know. I can't see another way. And um, all of a sudden, uh, opportunity appeared. And it was a very little one. Um, but I took it. And, and it started to, you know, things started to progress. We still hit some bumps in the roads, uh, in the road, but I still see opportunities and I see them quicker. You know, I see them quicker. Um, I'm learning how to take one opportunity, turn it into another opportunity. So I'm getting those skill sets. And I've looked at, you know, where are you, where are you, you falling short? I'm not following through, right? I need to make sure I'm staying in contact with my uh, potential customers um, and asking. That was one of the toughest things, just asking for, you know, that call of action. Um, that really slowed me down a lot, not to be afraid to ask, um, not to be afraid of the word no. You tell me no, I'm gonna call, okay, I'll call you back tomorrow. You know, that was it. So um, I got, I'm getting really good at that. And so I'm bouncing back quick and I'm, um, one opportunity is leading to a next and I'm out there looking for another one. You know, what you said there was interesting and um, 
the sense that, which by the way, like, you know, some of the things that you've described, you know, some of us have been through that as well. And, you know, these are just the thought, these are the stuff, right. That you have to fight through. Um, but you discovered how to take one little win, move it to the next one. And that creates momentum. And, and what I tell a lot of entrepreneurs is, you know, those little wins are what builds momentum for you and momentum creates confidence and then confidence all of a sudden people are like, I want to work with that person. What's going on here? And all of a sudden you're attractive that companies and people just, I feel like that's the secret. If anyone wants to know a secret, it's not one thing. It's the whole entire package, but it starts with little wins, you know, and, and it, and it sounds like you've really been doing that. So that's great. Um, we have a few more questions. Um, Aga has a question. So feel free to take yourself off mute and uh she's all the way from poland by the way so let's hear it uh hi thank you um i wasn't from the beginning so i hope i get everything correct what you said um i'm involved in some projects for uganda uh, with rotary international and they wanted to buy a computers for students and um teach them how to code and we've got some challenges how to do it if we like should send someone from Poland and um, because they are in Poland. Um, if we should, I don't know, hire some teacher there in Uganda. But uh, is it possible that they like can use your software yes. for learning how to code? Yes, we would love to speak to you about that and be a part of that, um, and you know help your students start to learn how to code. And that would be a great partnership for Code with Sharon. And this sounds exciting. Yeah, that's amazing because I'm talking with Rotary about this for, I don't know, six months and they, they are still not decisive. So if I say you are a partner and you are like ready to talk, then maybe we can, we can start earlier. So yeah, I will like connect with you, I don't know, on LinkedIn or somewhere. It will be so cool. Yes, I'll put my, um, I'm going to message you my contact information as well. So thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That was um, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Allison has a few more thoughts. Um, if you want to maybe uh, unmute yourself and, and jump in here a little bit. Sharon, have you thought about getting grants? Yes. And so um, we are looking into grants. I did have um, another organization, uh, Detroit PAL, um, is our um, athletic um, program for students to play football and basketball and they have a grant writer so he was um, letting me talk to his grant writer about how to write grants and so that's something we're in the process of doing. I know as an organization here that gives out grants unfortunately a lot of them we're running into are for organizations and we're not a .org and so that's another roadblock for us um, but we're still looking to see where where we can get one that been that that's catered towards what we do and how we do it. So I have Upwork, they have a talent grant. So what they do is they're giving credits for developers and like stuff like that. So different, like they have a lot of freelancers on their network. So they're giving out grants um, and it's a sizable amount. I remember they started during COVID, but I, if I was you, you don't need to be a grant. You don't need to write a grant. I think they're more casual about it. I think you should look into it. You probably would qualify for it. And basically you could get free, free coding and stuff like that and developers and stuff like that. Okay, so Upwork, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just um, posted in the chat. It looks like that might be the link to check out and follow. Okay, um, yeah, this, there, there's, there's gotta be op more opportunities out there, I would assume, you know. Um, so that's good. Um, you know, I wanted to wrap in quickly. Um, you know, Paul, Paul's on this call and I know that he has some, um, you know, uh, projects or at least interested in, in coding and whatnot. Paul, um, you have any thoughts, man? Any questions? Any, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm calling you out right now. So, um, uh, but, no, not yeah. right now. I was just listening in on the whole, on the whole conversation. Thanks though. <laughs> nice yeah. man. Nice. Well, I always I just appreciate the, all the founders live events. <laughs> uh, cool. Cool. Um, well, no, this is great. So, okay. Um, Sharon, just to kind of close up here, um, where can 
yeah, what, you know, obviously you're, we're doing some connections here and whatnot, but where can people uh, find more information, um, take steps or forward this to their organizations or, you know, partners? Uh, what, where should we learn more information? Yeah, so what we ask is, my call to action is, if you know of a, um, you know, maybe a school or teacher or an event that's going on, especially with all these virtual distant learning classes, um, and you know that you're looking for STEM education, please, by all means, I put my contact information in the chat. Um, like us on Facebook and LinkedIn um, and things like that. And so um, just, just spread the word. I ask people, you know, if you know anybody, maybe a parent that wants their student to learn how to code, maybe get off the game for a little bit, um, just share our information and share our story. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. That's that's not hard, and we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, you know, it, it, this was um, such a good conversation. Uh, I really enjoyed getting to know you and and your project, and um, you know, Code with Sharon. I, I mean, look, if you know, I asked you where in three to five years where you see it. Um, I would like this to be, you know, very large, very wide, and um, you know, educating you know, hopefully hundreds of thousands or millions of new uh, developers or what, you know, teachers that are teaching, which I really think is great. And, um, you know, getting this into many different schools and organizations around the world. I mean, this is like, this, this is very, very important. Uh, it's important not only because these are uh, important skills that are relevant and prevalent today, but we touched on this a little bit, um, just very, very important that the segment of the population you focus on underrepresented people, uh, we need to focus on that much, much more. And, and so, you know, um, I love what you're doing and, you know, so glad that, that we can, you know, just help put you out there. Thank you. I appreciate it um, for sharing your platform with me um, and just keep doing what you're doing and just keep these conversations going. This is how it starts. This is how we get to know each other and, uh, break down those walls um, and, and just get familiar with everybody. And so I really appreciate it. Well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so that's, that's it for today. And, um, you know, Sharon Eddings, uh, Code with Sharon, check it out. We've got uh, the information, not only in the chat room, but if you're listening to this later, you'll see the link uh, in the podcast and, um, you know, feel free to share that. And um, hopefully see you soon and and see you all uh online again so uh we will be done for the day so thank you all so much Bye,